All right, welcome everyone. Uh, let's let's dive right in. So I'm Christopher Batty, and I'm an associate professor here in the Department of, or the School of Computer Science at the University of Waterloo. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and my primary research area is computer graphics. And I'm gonna to talk to you today a little bit about our computer science program. Now there will be people in the Q&A or in the chat uh, window. If you have questions you'd like to ask during the presentation, feel free to type those there. Okay, so the first question you might ask is, well, why should you study computer science? Uh, you know, and as someone who's dedicated my life to computer science, I think it's a really fascinating and, and fun area of science. It's a great, you know, opportunity to express your own creativity. You can really stand on the shoulders of giants. There's so much code out there already that you can build on top of it to achieve really remarkable things. And fundamentally, computer science is everywhere all around us, from your cell phone to, you know, virtual reality headsets to supercomputers. Software really touches almost everything on Earth. And you know, financially, it's very rewarding as well. So there are many companies out there that need these skills. You could co-found your own company if you wanted. And at the end of the day, if you find a job that you really love, it really won't feel as much like work as it might otherwise. So what is computer science? Well, science as a whole is about conceiving, building, and evaluating models of how the world works, and computer science is no different. So we can kind of classify it into a few categories. First of all, there's the foundations, which are really the mathematical underpinnings. So things like computability, understanding algorithms, and the design of data structures, and complexity, which is a mathematical way of understanding how much algorithms cost. Then there's the, the hardware and systems side. So things like compilers, which uh, turn computer language code into runnable things that work on your computer. Operating systems, which is the software that runs your machine. Networks, user interfaces, databases that store gigantic amounts of data, and so on. And then finally, there's applications that build on top of both the foundations and the systems, which are things like machine learning, natural language processing, the interaction between humans and computers, which is HCI, graphics, bioinformatics, vision, computer algebra, and the list really goes on and on from there. So why Waterloo specifically? Well, uh, the easy answer is we're ranked number one in Canada for computer science. And worldwide, we've been ranked at number 23. So uh, we have a pretty good record that way. Uh, in terms of our, our campus, we have 3,600 undergraduate students, 400 plus graduate students, and over 90 faculty members dedicated just to computer science. So there's really a wealth of knowledge available there for you to build on and learn from. Uh, and finally, our co-op or our employment rate after graduation is 97.3%. So you have pretty good odds of getting a job uh, with a Waterloo computer science degree. So I'll talk a little bit about four undergraduate programs, our Bachelor of Computer Science, which is co-op or regular, our Bachelor of Software Engineering, which is co-op only. And then if you also have interests in business or finance, we have degrees for those as well. So the Bachelor of Computing and Financial Management, which is also co-op only. And then finally, the Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Computer Science double degree uh, allows you to mix business and computer science together. So again, this is co-op only, and this program is held jointly with Wilfrid Laurier down the street from us. So let's talk about computer science first. So one obvious question is, what is my first year going to look like in computer science? And basically, you're introduced to kind of the core mathematical and computer science ideas that you're going to use throughout the rest of your degree. And then you also have a little bit of room for some electives. You can see one elective in 1A and two in 1B term. An important question here is, what's the difference between the Bachelor of Computer Science program and the Bachelor of Mathematics program? Fundamentally, they're very similar and they cover a lot of the same material. Probably the key difference is just the amount of math courses and the number of free electives you have. So as you can see here, the Bachelor of Computer Science has seven math courses versus 12 for the Bachelor of Math. And you have eight other electives uh, in the Bachelor of Computer Science versus three under the Bachelor of Mathematics. Um, so the Bachelor of Computer Science gives you a little bit more flexibility in your degree, whereas the Bachelor of Mathematics really gives you a more traditional math degree, but with a focus on computer science. You can also customize your degree with a number of our different specializations. So bioinformatics, business, computational fine arts, digital hardware, artificial intelligence, human computer interaction, or software engineering. And for the ones marked with an asterisk there, those have limited space available. And we also have a newer program, the Bachelor of Computer Science in Data Science, which is an important topic these days that allows you to study, apply, and develop new methods to interpret large volumes of data, which of course combines ideas from computer science with statistics. But this is a second year entry program, so you would apply after your first year of computer science. This is available in both regular and co-op flavors. Now let's talk about software engineering. 
which as I said, is a co-op only program. So again, the difference here between computer science and software engineering, there's a number of them. Uh, so software engineering focuses on both software and hardware, whereas computer science is a focus more just on software. Computer science, again, offers you more flexibility and a greater choice of electives, whereas the software engineering program is a little more structured and focused. In the software engineering program, you also move through the program with the same cohort of students, whereas in computer science, you might be exposed to a larger number of different um, fellow students. And finally, the software engineering program is an engineering program, so you'll be able to graduate with uh, an actual engineering ring, and you can go on from there to pursue a professional engineering designation if you wish. What does my first year look like in software engineering? Well, again, very similar. You get some of those basic uh, math and computer science types of programs. Um, also a little bit of physics, so you can see classical mechanics and linear circuits there. So you're starting to get that introduction to hardware systems as well. On to computing and financial management, which allows you to, again, to combine computer science with the ideas of finance. So, here you can take the same courses as a finance computer science major. You know, in computer science, all the things we've been talking about, so understanding and exploring programming, software, algorithms, the limits of what can be computed, um, and then you can use these foundations to further explore areas of computer science that might interest you. On the financial management side, obviously finance is about numbers, trends, different ways of thinking. Uh, so you're going to gain knowledge in corporate finance, economics, markets, quantitative finance, and a lot more. Um, so this will really provide you with those skills that are, are needed in the modern financial world. What's your first per, uh, year look like here? Well, again, very similar. You get some of those core math and computer science courses, but you also start to get those accounting courses. So intro to financial accounting, intro to business stages, managerial accounting, and global financial markets. So diving right away into the finance knowledge that you'll need. And lastly, our computer science and business administration double degree program, which is held jointly between Waterloo and Wilfrid Laurier. So your first year here, again, core math and computer science uh, courses shared across all of our programs, really. But here you get introductory business courses as well. So the business environment, intro to microeconomics, intro to macroeconomics, and functional areas of the organization. Now note here that the business courses you're going to be taking will be just down the street from us at Wilfrid Laurier University. So it's a short walk to get uh, between classes. Now, an important aspect of Waterloo is our uh, award-winning co-op program, which has been around since the earliest days of Waterloo computer science. And as you can see here, uh, you know, we've had 21,000 plus co-op students enrolled in over 120 different programs and more than twice as many co-op students compared to the next largest university co-op program. So we're really renowned for our co-op program and we have connections with uh, corporations and companies all around the world that you might be able to do your co-op term with. Here's just a list of a, a few different co-op jobs you might be able to get, including app developer, data scientist, full stack developer, and you can see some of the different companies that our past students have been employed at during their co-op terms. So uh, a key question often is, should I do the co-op program or the regular program? So here the trade-off, of course, is that with a co-op program, you spend an extra year in the program. So it's five years instead of four, but the trade-off or the benefit is you get two years of additional paid work experience, um, whereas in the, in the pure regular program, you have your summers off to travel, work, start your own business, or really whatever it is you want to do with that extra time. And you'll also graduate earlier than you would if you were in the co-op program, of course. On the co-op side, though, you know, you will be earning money during your co-op terms, you know, from $55,000 to $120,000, typically if you get a job, and you'll graduate with much less debt and have a competitive advantage compared to others entering the job market, because you'll already have those employability skills. Okay, now... Getting into your first year of university can be tough, and so we have a wide range of different student resources available to help you with that transition. And here's just a few of them. So our mental and physical health um, services include counseling services, health services, athletics and recreation, University of Waterloo chaplains across a variety of, of uh, denominations, and we also have various off-campus resources. Of course, the academic side of your first year is important as well, and we have a number of supports there too. So we have computer science advisors, the math undergraduate office, the tutoring center, the student success office, as well as accessibility services and the writing and communication center. Finally, more general student services, we have the Center for Career Action and the Waterloo Undergrad Student Association. The Student Financial Services and Student Awards and Financial Aids are there to help you with some of the financial sides of your degree. And finally, the Cooperative and Experiential Education Services help you with those issues. 
Now, there are also a variety of different clubs uh, on campus, 250 or more of them, in fact, and you can see a number of those listed here. So we have the Math SOC, which is the Society for Mathematics Students. We have the Women in Computer Science Program for women who are interested in computer science. And we have, uh, you know, more interesting groups like the Humans versus Zombies uh, competition, which runs events where you play act as humans and zombies. Uh, and I won't say more about that. All right, now an important question is uh, admission requirements. What do you need to actually get into one of our programs here in computer science at Waterloo? So the following uh, requirements apply to all of our four programs. So you're gonna need advanced functions for you, calculus and vectors for you, any grade 12 English for you, and one other grade 12 U course, plus two grade 12 U or M courses. So now, the, although we are a computer science program, Many students you know, choose to take computer science as an elective in grade 12, but it's not actually required to apply. So as long as you have the, the courses listed above, you don't actually strictly need computer science. Now, of course, it's fun, so you should take it, <laughs> but you don't have to at all. Um, so the BSE program additionally requires physics and chemistry beyond what I've said above. Um, but lastly, the AIF form, the admissions information form is required for all of our CS programs. And I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, but here, the important date to keep an eye on is February 1st, 2022. That is the application deadline for the coming year. So the admissions information form, what is this? This is a chance for you to tell us a little something about yourself beyond what we can read from your transcript. So what are the non-academic activities you participated in, like clubs, sports, community service, employment, et cetera? Um, have you participated in any math contests, right? It's a good way to, to build your math skills early on. So. Um, contests like Euclid, Canadian Senior Math Contest, and so on. And really anything else you think would be useful for us to know to understand who you are and what you what you can contribute to, uh, to Waterloo and society as a whole. Okay, and just to say a little bit more of those contests. So there's a number of them upcoming in, in the year ahead. So the Canadian Senior Math Contest, November 17th and 18th, the Canadian Computing Competition, February 16th and 17th, and finally the Euclid Mathematics Competition on April 5th and 6th. Uh, how can I prepare for the contest? Well, we have a number of free resources available to start getting up to speed on, on computing and ma mathematics to compete in these, uh, in these contests. So you can go to www.cemc.uwaterloo.ca to learn more about that. And uh, the last thing I'll talk about is scholarships. So there are a number of different scholarships available to try and help you know, fund your education. We have presidents and merit scholarships. These ones don't require any specific application and they're gonna be based strictly on your marks. So typically 85% and up and they're valued from 1,000 to $5,000. Within the Faculty of Math, we have specific entrance scholarships. And again, these do not require a specific application, but they do require you to compete in the Euclid and or um, Canadian Senior Mathematics Contest in order to be uh, eligible. So these, like the ones above, are also based on marks as well as your AIF results, and the amounts can range from $1,000 to $10,000. And last but not least, the Faculty of Mathematics National and Global Scholarships, these ones do actually require an application, and the application process varies, um, but the value can range from $12,000 all the way up to $40,000. So that brings us to the end of, of my presentation today. Hopefully you've learned something about uh, the Waterloo Computer Science Program, and hopefully you've had a chance to get some of your questions answered. If you have further questions, you can always contact us at one of the uh, different destinations located here, whether by email, Facebook, uh, Instagram, or Twitter, of course. Okay, so thanks very much, and I will hopefully see you all in the future at the University of Waterloo. Thanks.